all been waiting for the bringing down of our brother who I never understood. One second, brother. I never understood who the brother was when I was at City College because he was always very quiet, very smooth, very pointed. But then when I came to the UAN Slave Theater, I started to realize and recognize who this black man was. Without further ado, brothers and sisters, we're going to bring down our own brother, Dr. James Small.
I'm not, I don't know what, you know, I'm, a, I'm on time. They are prayer. How much time do I have? Okay, so I can capsulize. If you don't, you'd be way out there and you don't finish what you came for and your time is lost. Knowing your time, you can do it. What I was speaking about tonight, I told this my sister called me from Georgia and asked for the title. My title was African Spirituality. It's not just aesthetics and a name change. Dr. Ben came and changed the lecture because he said, and rightfully so, that I need to speak on the goddess. And so we need to be serious. I'm going to do as best I can to give you as serious and as clear a view as I can, and I hope you take it as serious as you can. Because we are at war. It's not a war that started in America. It's not a war that started 500 years ago. It's a war that's at least 3,000 years old, if not over. It's a war we have been losing, especially in the last centuries, not because we are weaker than the enemy, or he's smarter than us, but I guess he is smarter than us. We are losing the war because we are not being us. We are labeled as Africans, using Africans to mean the original human being, because African is not the, Dr. Ben, I think it was 16, what was 1686, that the white man applied that word to our continent. And since it has become, and it comes out of the Roman uh, first century name they used for Tunisia, when that was considered Roman, a Roman colony. And so, for the lack of a better word, and I, we can use the Kibalon, that's the word that we got from Dr. Ben's research, we are not that people. We look like them, we can even sound like them, and we can certainly dress like them. And some of us have changed our names to sound like them, and some of us have even learned to speak some of the languages. And we've taken on social protocols that if you didn't know, you wouldn't know whether we just got off the plane or the boat or whether we've been here for the longest time. But we are not them. Even when we talk about defending ourselves against white abuse, against European genocide, it's almost like a shadow, speaking about a shadow, because we are not even the person who we say we want to defend. Now, I don't want to get way out on y'all, but I really want to be real serious. We talk about spirituality, and when people talk about spirituality, they're basically talking about type religion. And if they say they're talking about African spirituality, most people, not all, most of them are simply talking about learning from minor aspects of a culture of an African people who are part of the greater African civilization. <laughs> but we're not clear on what being an African is, and we certainly don't have a clue from what I see on what spirituality is, except for a few. Because Dr. Ben's concern tells us, and he's been making me understand it almost every time I speak, and he seems to be everywhere I speak. I'm in Baltimore, Dr. Ben is there. I'm in Philly, Dr. Ben is there. I'm at First World, Dr. Ben is there. I come here, Dr. Ben. It's like God has sent him to make sure I figure it out. You know? I was going to use the Yoruba tradition, because that's one I've been working in. Now, the Yorubas are people from West Africa. They're not all African people. And what we call the Yoruba tradition is not what all Africans do. That's one culture expressing an ancient wisdom as the way of life. There's one cultural expression of our universal way of life. Okay? They're not the at all, and their language, when I say Oludumari, that's not the name of God. 
That's the word the Europe is used to designate God. You understand? So we have to be clear and get it, make sure we're not trapping ourselves in the white label bag. We use the white label bag and the Alcon brothers, like my brother here, will say, well, I'm dealing with uh, Tigre. And so that means he can't deal with the brother dealing with Shango. And then he can't deal with the brother who's dealing with Rock. Because there be white men with black face and African label. But they're all calling it spirituality. And it's not. It has nothing to do with spirituality. You know what spirituality is? It's being real. Spirituality is being real. Okay? In the Yoga tradition, they say Olujimari is God, the creator. But they don't tell you that Olujimari is the feminine, the mother, a woman, a female, a goddess. They say Olu which means the God of heaven. But Olujimari is the creator God. Okay, that's the one that brings you into being. Everybody in here was created over a 10 month gestation period in the belly of a woman. That is the function. Everything that you see in the universe follows that process that that woman follows in bringing life into being. Our ancestors were very simple. They didn't, this stuff wasn't complex for them. They knew. And the word God is a German word that means mighty man. Those are the Germans of the Vikings, and they were talking about Valhalla, and, and this mighty man who killed the most people would then be declared the one who's the omnipotent. Well, they didn't even have a word for omnipotent. That's why the word G-O-D meant mighty man. He would go to Valhalla depending on how many people he killed. He was the man because he killed so many other men and women. So when you say God in the English language, realize that's what you're connoting. You're not connoting omnipotent, omnipresent, and supreme. And if something is omnipotent, if something is omnipresent, if something is supreme, it alone can exist. Nothing else can occupy the space with it. You don't get that concept. I can see a look on your face. We say supreme being then we must assume there's an inferior being, right? As I read the literature of our ancestors and I listen to the language as much as I can get in, the rituals and the dance and the music, what they're saying is that w this thing that we in English call supreme being is what is in existence. Let me, let me try to do that again, because before I really get to the goddess and explain that concept to you deeper, I want to deal with the notion of the Supreme Being. If the Supreme Being exists, and it must, because there can't be a time that it doesn't exist, because if there's a time when it doesn't exist, then it ain't the Supreme Being. So that means we can't even have a concept of non-existence then, because there is no such thing as a concept of non-existence. Because if there's a non-existent point, then there had to be something else in existence that this new existence comes from, right? So the whole notion of non-existence don't exist. Even the notion of end can exist. Nothing can end if it's in existence. Would y'all agree with that? I hope we agree with that. We're going to try to take, take you home so that we stop being white folks in black face. Because that's what all of us are. I'm a white man in black face trying to get black enough. And I'm clear that that's what I'm trying to do. Most people are white folks in black face and don't know it. And they think they're, they're, they're where they're supposed to be. If the supreme being exists, and it brings us into being, where does it get the peace? Now, if it exists, that means nothing else can exist because it is existence. It is all. So what are we? Except aspects of the supreme existence. An expression of itself. You can't be anything else if you're going to have this supreme existence that's here before anything else is here. And then it brings us into being. What is it bringing into being? 
And in order to bring into being everything we've seen in nature that brings into being is what? Feminine. Is it messed up? Because if the rectum is producing any life besides that goes in the toilet, we are in serious trouble. But that's what the rulers of this country would want you to think. They just passed the legislature here in New York to come up with a homosexual rest home or some stuff. Old senior citizen home. And they're going to take your tax money for it and y'all going to talk about tolerance and multicultural and you don't want to be homophobic and all that other foolishness. Because you don't understand. God is a woman. But deeper than that, God don't explain what it is. Because the word God ain't big enough to encompass it. Okay? The cause out of which everything comes is feminine. It is a female. The supreme being has to be a female in order to create and bring forth any kind of life. But you want to rationalize, you want to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, then they got to be a male being someplace. They don't have to be. They really don't have to be. Whatever little term white folks use and trying to grasp and understand it, everything that makes, like, the cell in this little thing, the same, I can take a cell out of this little pinky, it's got everything to make me up. Got everything in it to make me, the whole me. But that cell, that left to itself, isn't going to form anything but a pinky. Because it knows its job, it knows its instruction, it knows what it's supposed to do. African people trying to grasp spirituality. I know folks like to hear about the candle burning and the setting up the altar and the meditating. But since you've been doing that all these years, ain't nothing no good for you. I ain't going to come here and talk about that, because that's not what it's about. You can do, you done burned enough candles, set up enough altar, that you should be floating in that door and not touching the ground. <laughs> you want to be spiritual, then you got to be serious. That the organism that you are, the matter and energy that you are, requires something. Requires some food, requires some shelter, requires some covering in this climate. You got to be able to provide that if you're going to be responsible for the organism that you are. You got to provide food, you got to provide it clothing, and you got to provide it shelter. If you can't do that, you're in opposition to the very creator that gave you the opportunity to be expressed in this manner that we call human beingness. Spirituality is being responsible for the integrity of the organism that you are and the others that you are related to. And the nature you find yourself in, meaning your cousin the tree and your friend the, the squirrel and your brother the deer and, and et cetera and so forth. Because not one of them contains anything less or more than you do. Every thing you find in you in terms of what makes up each of the cells, that makes up each of the organ, that make up each of the system, that is you, they have it all too. When you go and eat some collard greens, you're not eating some alien thing that's going to slide down a tube and slide out of you. No. You're eating something that is related to you in parts as you're related to it. And you will extract from that collard green some things that will allow you to live. Okay? So the color greens can't be alien. Matter of fact, that tells you then that color greens is made up of the same stuff you made up of, isn't it? I'm not giving to y'all. I know y'all would rather think of a church and a preacher or a priest, an African priest with a full regalia on and, and, and pouring some libation and saying some stuff you don't understand anyway, but you say that. We have allowed our women to go unprotected. We 
have allowed over in this country our women to go unprotected. Let me tell you what I mean. If the woman, if the, the creator is a feminine, and we are aspects of that expression, then wouldn't then the female be the most significant aspect of that expression? Now, I know there's a culture in New York, and I remember running into that culture when I first came in. I didn't understand it, of women hating among black men. And I remember when I first encountered it, it had an Islamic base or an Arab base. People thought it was Islamic. And it blew my mind. I came from a little village on a plantation where women were gods. Where a thought of being disrespectful would get you whipped. Even if you were an adult. And I came to a city where people were referring to women as being snakes and dogs. And I remember being very confused, not understanding what is that. But I know that over the years, anytime you raise the question of the woman to elevate them, you get a reaction from the brother. And it's real deep because I'm feeling some of it in the audience right now. I'm feeling you like the youngsters say. I'm feeling you. If you want to be treated like a god, then shouldn't you treat the goddess like a goddess? How do you expect a goddess to treat you like a god when you don't even respect her integrity as your mother? Think, think, think of the principle now. Think of the principle of what the woman is. For 10 months, she makes the decision not to abort you that's the first godly thing she does for you. And then for 10 months, she stays healthy and nurtures you and nobody else in the universe except the ultimate creation know you coming. And then she goes through some of the most traumatic physiological and psychological trauma to bring you here. And if you've not seen a woman deliver, I think that was straight out most men, as it has me, you need to be there and see what that woman got to go through to bring you into this world. <laughs> and you need to know this that decision alone is very, very dangerous because how many millions have died giving birth to that life they decide to bring forth? But most of your life, she makes sure you are nurtured starting from the very beginning with her breath and the very serum from her own body that you are nurtured so you can biologically survive. And matter of fact, her milk gives you the immune help your system needs to fight off the new environment diseases that you come into. Absolute protection, the maximum, the most protection you can get from any nourishment is from the milk of your mother especially when you're just coming in here. Then she psychologically and mentally help form you in the most delicate, formative moment of your existence. And throughout your whole life, even when daddy want to kick your butt, it's always mama putting a hand over your head, taking the hips and then the whipping for you. Because you've done something disobedient and inappropriate. And then when you become an adult, you're looking at your mama through the face of another woman and treats her like she's the enemy. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I want to say the reason we are being that inappropriate, because what we are calling our spirituality is white religion and black faith. Mm -hmm. You're Christian right down to the bone. And I don't give a damn about Jesus, because it never existed. What people tell you you got to do, let me even do I don't give a damn about Allah either, because what you better understand, because you've accepted the ways of the slave masters and it makes you feel good, who are you then to then take on the slave master role and enforce his theological imperialism on the rest of us. No, that's it. 
No, don't be just ooing me, because most of y'all is into some of that to some degree or another. Because they give you the poison, you start up your life. They poison you with their philosophy. They poison you with their religion. They poison you with your notion of reality. And then they turn around when they've thrown you in prison, when they've raped your family down, when they've broken you apart, they give you another version of the same garbage and tell you it's going to save you. And you take it. And then you come to me now to impose the imperialist so-called spiritual and religious point of view on us in our community simply because he's given you the right to pass his life. And I don't beat you down enough now. Take my way without fighting, and I'll give you a right to pass it. And then you come back and you get deeper than that. You used to go, oh, well, you know it all started in Africa. So Christianity, Judaism, and Christianity, and Islam, all of these things started in Africa. Then give up their interpretation and come back to Africa. Give up their fragment from the periphery. Come back to where you say it all comes from. If all of this stuff came out of Africa, if it's supposedly to haven't been written as a new book out saying blacks or Africans wrote the Bible, that's not really true. And he's going to make some things because he's going to make a bunch of you feel happy. The Torah, the Old Testament, the, the New Testament so-called, and the Quran all use each other in a partnership. The Christians use the Torah, that makes up the Bible. The Quran use the Torah and the New Testament and the final revelation, that makes up the Quran. Now wait a minute, something wrong with that. Then they tell me they're different. How can you be different when you're only the third story or the second story of the same building? When you predicate your whole existence on the same folklore, the same history, the same ritual as the people you say you're different from. That don't make no sense. You know, but, and you know, you good Christian brothers and sisters, even those of you who come here, I know, I'll know because when you die, I'll come to your funeral because I plan to live a long time and I bet you're going to be laying up in a Christian church and they're going to be talking about what a good Christian you were. Passover. Y'all all have celebrated Passover. Right? Some of y'all are even laughing like y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Passover is what? Those of them, the Jews, get out of Egypt. Passover is the celebration of the murder of black boys. If Passover is when the God of our enemy kills the firstborn male of all of our households, isn't that the murder and genocide of black boys? that you condone in your consciousness and your subconsciousness being appropriate behavior such that you celebrate the damn thing no matter what your religions are? 49. When you say you got things revealed, I, I want to know who revealed it. If I'm the original, how dare anybody to bring some Romanized, Greco, Persian, Assyrian, mulatto interpretation of me back to me and forth about my throat with a sword or a gun for centuries murdering, raping, even turning me into a eunuch by cutting up my testicles because of his inferiority complex. And then forth on me. No one even accept what has been done to you. You think that there's a place and a space you can make peace with the white man, Arab, Christian or Jew. Some cry and talk about tears over these Palestinians. There ain't a damn Palestinian in your community that has come in alliance with you. And wait a minute. And the sad thing, so many of us that have accepted the religion of the Arabs, we go in an alliance with them with an abandonment of the black community. We abandon the black struggle. But we can see why we should fight for Arab liberation when the Arabs have done more to desecrate Islam than any people on earth, if Islam has any validity at all. And you Christians, y'all don't be looking down. Y'all got less to be grateful for. And you Hebrews who lights up in the corner, you got less to be grateful for. 
those things you call religion are your enemies. Construction on how to form your psycho spiritual consciousness to determine what your worldview is going to be based on a folklore that he invented to give himself some history which he didn't have. You've accepted that as being some message from God. And so you miss the point. Even when he talks about the Virgin Mother, even when you say, oh, they really talk about black water, do you really truly believe it? And if you do, why do you let them continue to desecrate black women? Even you, black women, allow them to desecrate yourself, but you know better. And you and me, black men, allow it to happen. Let me take it back and tell you where, where I'm going with that. From my understanding, that whole idea of the Virgin Mother, because there's nothing in the Bible, Torah, or the Quran that you can't find in the Book of Coming Forth by Day, in the Pyramid Text, in the Coffin Text, and other early texts that the people of the Nile Valley wrote thousands of years before any of those three books. I can break them down book by book. You can find most of us in the Psalms, the Proverbs. You can find the Surah to Asar. You can find the Surah Ikhlas in other ancient literature. So we need to stop playing games. If we say because this stuff comes from Africa, let's go back to Africa and get what it came from then and not get what came from it. You better truly understand because it gets deeper than this. If you are ever going to understand what Hot 97 is doing, because James, if people don't understand it, many of the people here listen to Hot 97, don't be fooled. There ain't something they kids doing that they're missing. I'm not going to let them get away being all quiet when you said that. I was putting back up there, I was here, and oh, thank God he don't know I listen. Yeah, they listen to Some of y'all, the revolutionary, they listen. But the reason, and they don't agree with it, but you can't do anything about something unless it affects you in the right way. If your mind has been constructed and formed out of the history of your enemy, and your enemy attacks you, how can you defend your integrity when you don't have one? To have integrity, you must have history. And if you've got a history, you must be the result of that history emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually. And if you're not emotional, spiritual, and intellectually the result of your history, then you've got a problem. I think John Clark, Dr. Clark said, history sometimes tells you where you have been in order to tell you where you are so you can estimate where you still have to go. This is simple, and we've made it complex. If you're a white man, American, your grandparents and your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents is responsible for genociding hundreds of millions of Africans, and you got wealthy and built your technology off the labor, rape, and genocide of tens of millions more. And that in that process, you concocted all kinds of intellectual rationalization for why you can murder, rape, plunder, kill another human being so that you can be satisfied that you're right at what you're doing. If you're an African-American, you must, by your very nature, want to bring to justice the children of the people who murdered, raped, killed, and plundered your people. But you can't. You can't because he's given you a philosophy of forgiveness and of redemption and of brotherhood and of peace and all they got to do to have you exercise this against them is to join the religion you're in and extend the hand of fellowship and you forgive them. One million murder don't matter. But then you go to kill somebody because there's two backward group of mixed bees and whole bee crackers in the Middle East fighting over Northeast Africa that don't belong to neither one of them. Both of them got there as a result of invasion and genocide. 
on African people. But since you don't know history, and you don't understand that you have to be the result of history, you're confused, and you're sitting back here trying to figure out which side you take. But all you got to do and see who have been brought in to be the neo-colonial enterprises in your community, they wouldn't give you the money to buy a store or to rent a building. But as much as that Jew say he hates the Arab, he'll extend him credit. I've been at my grocery stores in America. How did they get to set up the grocery stores? I went with some of them in the early days. The Jews put them in business because they want to make sure you couldn't control yourself and you can't control yourself. Because in order for you to understand African spirituality, you must understand that food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security is necessary for the organism. You must understand that your woman, your mother, your sister, your daughter must be held in a sacred position. Now, no longer are we going to call it a queen. She is a goddess. If you treat the woman like a god, you ain't got to worry about what happens when you are fighting the war. But you're so busy thinking you're going to protect her physical extremity that you can't even be responsible for giving her something to eat or drink. But it gets deeper than that because these people, and we have allowed these people to tell us that we are African. Imagine all the African people. I like Mr. Booker T. Washington. Y'all don't like Mr. Booker T. Washington because the Marxist Leninists, see, have told y'all how to be black nationalists. And mostly black nationalists are hardcore political black nationalists. Your ideological perspective comes from the Jewish back Zionist owned Marxist Leninists. And so you miss the point when it comes to owning land where you live. You miss the point when it comes to training to have a business. You can't say you're spiritual if you don't own no damn land. Where you got to have your spirituality at? The earth is your mama. She feeds you. She grows the things you make your clothes out of. She gives you the petroleum to burn in your lamp. She gives you the tree to give you shade, to give you wood, and to give you oxygen. Everything that keeps you going comes from Mother Earth. You call her Mother Earth and you still have no respect for things motherly. Yet everything you consume comes from her. The concept of the mother in nature is the concept of God itself. The creator and the nurturer must by course based on function be feminine. That concept I started mentioning earlier about the, the, the virgin mother. When they're talking about the virgin mother, they're actually talking about the first black woman. Like Mr. Bell Point said, the first black woman and child along the Nile. <laughs> what the white man is saying and you miss. He got you thinking you're worshiping some little white woman back in time. The concept of the mother and child being deified means that's how all mothers should be treated. That level of deification you give to the Virgin Mary is the level of deification due to all women. There is nothing implied in the literature that Mary does that you don't do if you're a mother. But we don't quite understand it because we'll say it came from Africa, but we won't go back to Africa where it came from. So we rather fight based on I'm defending Christianity, I'm defending Hebrew Israelite. Oh, Sister Prince said, Shalom. Come here. <laughs> That's my Hebrew Israelite sister, but mother, and then her daughter, Sister Williams, and her sister. But we have to get an understanding that makes sense. The notion of family is not something the white man invented. We invented family. But we didn't invent family. We watched the rest of nature. We watched the cosmos. We watched the sun. We watched the moon. We watched the stars. We watched the trees. We watched the earth. We watched the water. We watched the rain. We learned there was a function and principle in the cosmology and in the nature and we also learned that that same function existed in our human experience. That we've got an air cooling system, the lung. 
We've got a couple of river systems, the lymph system, the blood system, we've got cleansing system. Everything that happens in our body happens in the rest of nature. The same law that governs how a river cleans itself governs how we clean ourselves. Our ancestors understood that, that the same laws that made the universe work is the same law that make us work. And that same law that makes the universe work and that same law that governs a different function in nature is the same law that governs how we should construct the family and what the roles are that's being played by those in the family. But we have a law of the right men tell us that a family could be two homosexuals. And there is no attempt at producing life. But they got a union based on pleasure derived from physical manipulation of certain nerve endings in their body. And then they got you confused to think that that's love, so they actually call sex love making. And we all fall for it, I've been there too. But uh, you can't love yourself unless you can love what we're calling the goddess. And you can't love the goddess unless you know it exists in fact. And you can't know whether it exists in fact unless you study the history of your ancestors. And you can't, in studying the history of your ancestors, you can't take it lightly and think it's just moments in time. Everybody in here, if it started with one woman, then that means everybody in here is the descendant of that one woman. Yes. That means then that you have the DNA and the DNA, RNA, and melanin of billions of people programmed in every cell in your body. That means then the potential of those billions of people is just locked down in you because you're ignorant <coughs> of your history and your process. And if you could grasp that, then you'd understand that the primary ancestor is the God itself. I started out by saying we are an aspect of God being expressed in this ecology. It can't be any other way. If you come from God, you've got to be an aspect of it. You've got to be a piece of it. You've got to be made of what it's made of. But if we don't begin, to return to African based spiritual system, not just a reference, but to have ourselves again informed, instructed, and produced by an understanding of an African philosophical or theological or spiritual system, then we're not really African. We're not really black folks. We are crippled, mutated, white folks. <laughs> no, I mean, think of it seriously now. If you're an African, in essence, you're the God. But he's got a religion that tells you God is removed to here, and you are here. And they'll kill people if you say otherwise. And you said, no, small, don't say that. Oh, yeah, just study our history. We have been murdered by the millions by people bringing their religion and forcing them out, telling us God sent them to do it. God said love, they said. God is life, they said. But they murder us in the name of that God. They rape us in the name of that God. And if, and if it wasn't about land, why are they still living on our land imposing their rule? If it wasn't, go to our land. Our lands are dominated by Christians and Muslims and Jews. Who taking the gold? Who taking the oil? If it was about telling us about God, what they're doing, taking the substance. But you still don't get it. You still so scared of dying. And that's the key one. See, the white man has used his religion to make you scared to die. How many people in here is 200 years old? 200 years old. Anybody here 200 years old? Anybody in here know anybody 200 years old? We do know we've been around the world, been around a few million years at least. That means everybody who lived all that time is dead. 
right? Most of us in here at this age don't have a mother and probably more father. You know why? Because they're dead. But if you were in an African thing, you'd understand there's no such thing as death. See, you scared because you think they're dead, and you know you're going to be dead like that according to what you understand. So what the one man does, and it's so stupid, everybody in here going to die in that way, meaning the energy going to leave this matter, we call it the body, and we, depending on what our ritual is, going to lock you up in a metal box, then lock that up in a brick box, and bury it in the ground. Stupidest thing in the world. You know, the best way to bury any living thing or thing that once lived is in the ground. So it can go back. So the manganese can go back to manganese and the iron can go back to iron and the iodine can go back to iodine and the, and the potassium can go back to potassium. And the water can evaporate and go back up in the sky and then rain down on the plants and you eat the plants and drink it and enjoy your ancestors. That's the way it used to be. Y'all still didn't get it, did you? <laughs> You're afraid to die, so all he has to do is threaten you with death. His religion tells you to be afraid to die, because his religion makes you want to live, and the reason you're afraid to die because it doesn't tell you nothing about life. You haven't a clue what life is about. You haven't a clue what the purpose of your being is. You ever think your purpose of being is to have sex and eat? And to wear clothing? And you only fight when something just makes you too upset you can't do nothing else? It interests you, everybody, nearly on this planet. But if you knew that life is eternal, that you can't die, and that nothing can kill you, and that everything that's in your being has always been here. And before you were given passage through your mother's womb, you were, in some other way, here. Our culture would teach you like that. And it would tell you in our culture that you have a destiny that you commanded that brought you into being. And that you had to fulfill. And once you fulfill that destiny, you will exit. But he's created such a false environment that you can exit out of the body without even addressing your destiny, without even being aware that you have one. Static electricity. I don't know much about science in that sense, but I know that electricity, that when you move around, you can't move without creating energy. To run the human body, every function of every cell, right down to the mitochondria, which is some very tight right down into the heart of the cell, and all those other functions of the exiting and entering, entering of the enzymes and all the other stuff that goes on in the billions of cells every day. It would take a nuclear power plant to power you if they were to create something to do the same thing you're doing. So you are generating all of this energy. But we don't know whether we are generating negative energy or positive energy. And that's why ancestors came in. That's why they came up with Neches and Arishas. They came up with a way to show you in nature powers and forces and qualities and attributes that were positive so that you can recognize those powers and forces and attributes within yourself and so that you can then create them within the, your character and your behavior so that you can produce the right kind of enzymes at the right time in the right amount to do the right things for the body that should be done. You all got that? Yeah. And you don't have to be a doctor to understand that. But I know Dr. McIntyre's deal with a lot of brothers and sisters who have inappropriate behavior, and most of that inappropriate behavior has to do with inappropriate belief, inappropriate understanding, and inappropriate comprehension of reality. And if you have, if you get too inappropriate in your behavior, 
even if it happened two or three generations ago, you can damage your ability to produce certain chemicals that will keep you focused in a way that you'd be considered to be normal, a normal organism in the ecology. I know this ain't quite the spiritual lecture y'all wanted, but I'm just saying how I see it. Spirituality is being real. Spirituality is understanding that you and nature are the same thing, different expression of the same thing. And our ancestors have left to us in our so-called religions, in the Archons, in the Yorba, in the Airway, in ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, ancient Akibaron, it has left us ways of understanding how to organize ourselves in relationship to the rest of being so that we have harmony and balance. To have a grasp of, of expansion and contraction of cause and effect or law of opposites as a function in nature being primary, that if we can get an understanding of that, that we can see it in an external manifestation and we can see it in this internal manifestation and then we can consciously develop it into our conscious manifestation. It's like being married. Man, woman. Then we don't have a marriage. A marriage is two different things coming together forming one, not two same things coming together forming one. Y'all got that, right? So, a marriage. And even before marriage, it's the relationship. And we call it a culture where we have relationships now. See, in our ancient times, and not too ancient times, the parents of the man and the woman got together. And they decided at birth, based on the spiritual instructions from our priests and priestess, who these kids are coming back into being, whether they belong together or not in the future. And so marriages were agreed upon at the birth of babies. And the community then nurtured those two people so that when they became adults, adults according to the community, they can come together and form families. But we don't believe in that anymore. We into the white man saying that I'm in love. I gotta fall in love. And if I don't feel that, mom and daddy ain't got nothing to say. You know, I was like that. I actually, as I got to be an older adult, just like in the early days, I, I went off from under the roof. But I did the last three women I brought home to my parents. And they chose the one I ended up with. And they actually turned down to us with reason. Now, I didn't understand how African that was. I just understand that's the way we did it. But now I understand why Africans do it. How are you going to get someone that is not even clear on what the world outside a house is about, make a decision on the quality and attributes of a human being they're going to be with for the rest of eternity? But the point I wanted to make about family, the same rules that govern the universe, the same rules and principles and concepts that govern the function of nature. The same rules, concepts, and principles that govern the human body and all other living organisms. There's a set of rules, regulations, and principles that it works according to. Our ancestors over centuries discerned many of those rules. And it is of that discerning and that understanding that they created a body of literature that we call spiritual or sacred literature. You all understand me? It is these principles, concepts, and ideas that when two human beings who understand them within themselves come together, that they create a third thing. A family is a third thing that's created by the two things. But the family should be built on the same spiritual principles that the universe is built on. The family should be organized in the same way your understanding of God's organization is. Because everything should be an imitation and an emulation of God. Of what we understand to be the supreme, omnipotent, omnipresent. Right now, all of us, myself including, are basic imitations of white mutants who was attempting to imitate us. 
So we had an imitation of a poor imitation of ourselves by a mutant with the incapability of accepting the functions necessary to act like us. So he has to demote us through fear and intimidation so that we won't challenge him and his inferiority. And so we end up being more inferior than the inferior because we think it's our equal. You know, y'all think the white man is your equal. That's why you find him the way you fight him. You can't beat that devil at his game. You ain't gonna beat him, fight him the way you're fighting him. He loves killing. You look at all the wars this thing has fought. The murdering of a couple of million people. Bush is trying to get his quota. Satisfy his bloodlust. That ain't a joke. That's the nature of the beast, and if you're the head beast, then you've got to really do your thing. But y'all don't really believe that. We say that, but y'all don't really believe that. Let me conclude, because the time is up. African spirituality is understanding your ecology. Both your external ecology and you, your internal ecology. African spirituality is the realization through knowledge of your own history and ancestral integrity that you and what you call the God is one and the same. African spirituality tells you that the God this is the supreme being. And any man in here who don't think so, I know you're a liar. You know why? Because you care to get home in that bed with her. You would steal to be with her. You, even when you put her down, you won't leave her. So then take the responsibility for how you should treat her. Stop playing yourself. Ask yourself, where did I get the belief system that tells me how to see the female? Tell me you got it from Africa, and then I know you're back among the gods. But if you would rather think like the three so-called revealed Western religion, that God is something removed from you and you some inferior thing, then go ahead and do that. But don't impose that on me, and if you impose it on the black community, you're an enemy of the race. And let me tell you all the rest. No, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. You are not going to fight a revolution to free black Christians or Muslims because it ain't compatible with being African. I know you find that difficult to believe, but go back into history. How long have we been these three things? And ever since we've been these things, we ain't been nothing. How long? And if you don't get it, because he has made you so shallow to your reality that you're afraid to give up his... He don't even worship that stuff. We got the crack of Christian Bush and the Zionist Sharon and the Jive Prince of Saudi Arabia all hanging out together. Yeah. You better get a wake-up sign, and then a damn one of them talking about looking out for your interest. But you don't get it. You cannot fight and win this war unless you create secret societies. Don't be clapping. For a minute, don't clap at nothing, not even say a word. Let me just say something to you. Don't say nothing. You need secret societies made up of people willing to kill without thinking they're doing something wrong. People can kill and then just carry it inside they've done wrong, but they did it for a good cause. No, I'm saying something deeper than that. When you kill the enemy of your beingness, you are not doing nothing wrong. That's it. Let me tell you something. No, stop clapping. I ask you not to do that. I want you to hear me. You clap it right away. This is the way your enemy thinks. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 20, 10 to 16. When you draw near to the city to fight against it, offer terms of peace to it. 
And if it answers to you is peace and it opens to you, opens to you then all the people who are found in it shall do forth labor for you and shall serve you. Now, they, if you're going off in peace and they say they're cool, then you just make them slaves. But if it makes no peace with you, but makes war against you, meaning people trying to defend themselves, then you shall besiege it. And when the Lord your God gives it into your hand, you shall put all its males